NASA has been creating history and pushing boundaries since 1958. Remember the Apollo missions that landed the first humans on the moon? And those awe-inspiring images sent back by rovers from Mars? Yep, that's NASA for you. And now they're venturing back to the moon, but this time with a permanent and more ambitious goal in mind with the Artemis program. Now, you might be asking why they've chosen the South Pole for their lunar base, especially when we've always associated the moon landings with the equatorial regions. Well, the reasons are pretty fascinating. Let's get to know Artemis a bit better. Named after the twin sister of Apollo in Greek mythology, Artemis signifies a new era of lunar exploration. Well, the moon, being our closest celestial neighbor, offers a practical environment to test new technologies and procedures before we embark on the much longer and riskier journey to Mars, a sort of cosmic proving ground, if you will. Artemis aims to not just land humans on the moon again, but to establish a sustainable human presence there. Imagine a world where trips to the moon are as commonplace as international flights are today. You might be scratching your head though, asking why NASA decided to pivot from Mars back to the moon. Here's the deal. The moon is our cosmic next door neighbor, just about a quarter million miles away. It's far enough to provide a real test for mission operations and astronaut capabilities, but close enough to make it a more achievable goal in the short term than Mars. The moon acts as a practical, accessible laboratory where we can test and refine technologies and operational procedures, potentially saving time, money, and lives on future Mars missions. Artemis is much more ambitious than just planting a flag on the lunar surface and calling it a day. The goal is to establish a sustainable human presence on the moon, not just to revisit it. We're talking about potential lunar habitats, science labs, and maybe even a bustling lunar economy. But let's get back to our question, why the South Pole? Well, the answer lies in three key factors, unique geography, abundant water, and perpetual sunlight. The South Pole is riddled with deep craters that are believed to contain substantial deposits of water ice. Water, as you know, is not just crucial for life support, but can also be processed into hydrogen and oxygen, the components of rocket fuel. Now, why is water so important in space? Apart from being a fundamental requirement for life, water can be split into its elemental components, hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen can be used for life support, while both elements can be used to create rocket fuel. That's right, the moon could potentially become a fuel depot in space. And what about sunlight? Areas around the lunar south pole receive sunlight nearly all the time. That means we could set up solar panels to generate electricity almost non-stop, powering a lunar base and all its operations. The lunar south pole isn't just an exotic outpost. It's going to be a scientific laboratory for studying the moon and a vital link to further exploration of the solar system. It will allow us to test and refine the techniques needed for living off the land in an extraterrestrial environment. And it'll serve as a staging post for missions to Mars and even beyond. As a scientific outpost, it will be a hub for astronomers and geologists to study the moon and its unique environment. They could study everything from lunar geology to cosmic phenomena from a whole new perspective. The moon will also play a crucial role in our ambitions to venture further into space. The lessons we learn on the moon will be invaluable for planning longer duration human missions to Mars. Imagine the moon as a spaceport where spacecraft bound for Mars and beyond are launched, perhaps using lunar produced fuel. But the path to building on the moon is not without its challenges. Everything from the extreme environment of the moon to technical issues such as lunar dust infiltration poses significant hurdles. But as always, NASA has some ingenious solutions up its sleeve. They've been exploring everything from advanced robotics to 3D printing techniques using lunar regolith, or moon dust, to overcome these obstacles. Building on the moon is not as easy as stacking a few bricks, though. Numerous challenges exist, ranging from technical hurdles to environmental constraints. For starters, the lunar surface is covered in a fine, sticky dust known as lunar regolith, which can infiltrate equipment and is potentially harmful for humans to inhale. Temperature variations on the moon are also extreme, ranging from boiling hot to colder than the dark side of Pluto. This mission is not solely about space. It has substantial implications for us here on Earth. The knowledge gained from the lunar base could give us profound insights into our own planet's geology and environment. 
Furthermore, the technological advancements driven by the Artemis program have the potential to revolutionize industries here on Earth. Just as the Apollo missions sparked a surge in computer technology, who knows what breakthroughs Artemis will inspire? And that's not all. The mission could be a catalyst for new industries, from lunar mining to space tourism, potentially creating thousands of jobs and reshaping our economy.